Welcome to worship this evening. A special welcome to any guests or visitors that we have with us this evening. We're glad you're here worshiping with us. We also welcome all those who are worshiping with us online, on TV, and also on the radio. For those who are worshiping with us on the radio, I, Pastor Nick Quinette, will be conducting the service, and our preacher is Pastor Tim Miller, and our organist is Mrs. Becky Fisher. Our focus for today is we're continuing our Lenten Sunday services of Our Greatest Needs for the theme. The theme for today is Our Greatest Need, Sight for the Blind. I invite you all to take these truths that we learn from God's Word and apply it to your lives this week and the weeks to come. We continue with the opening hymn, hymn number 576, Amazing Grace. to follow along in the hymnal, we'll be using an adapted version of the service setting one. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sins to the Lord. Holy God, gracious Father, I am sinful by nature and have sinned against you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have not loved you with my whole heart. I have not loved others as I should. I deserve your punishment both now and forever. But Jesus, my Savior, paid for my sins with his innocent suffering and death. Trusting in him, I pray, God have mercy on me, a sinner. Our gracious Father in heaven has been merciful to us. He sent his only son, Jesus Christ, who gave his life as the atoning sacrifice for the sins of the whole world. 
Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. O Lord Jesus Christ, by your almighty power, you opened the eyes of the blind and showed yourself to them. Turn our eyes away from the worthless things and lead us to love you sin sincerely. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 42. Here we see that God promises to lead the blind to safety and turn their darkness to light. I have been silent for a long time. I have kept still. I have restrained myself. But now, like a woman giving birth, I will scream. I will grasp and pant. I will dry up mountains and hills. I will make all their grass wither. I will turn rivers into islands. I will dry up pools. I will lead the blind on a way they do not know. Along paths they do not know, I will direct them. Ahead of them, I will turn darkness into light and rough places into level ground. These are the things I will accomplish for them. I will not abandon them. They will be turned back and completely disgraced. Those who trust in an idol, those who say to molten images, you are our gods, you deaf ones listen. You blind ones watch carefully so that you can see. Who is as blind as my servant? Who is as deaf as my messenger whom I sent? Who is as blind as my associate? As blind as the servant of the Lord? You, Israel, see many things, but you do not observe. Israel opens his ears, but he does not hear. Because of his own righteousness, the Lord was pleased to make his law great and glorious. The word of the Lord. We continue by singing the psalm, Psalm 27c, The Lord is my light and my salvation.
our second reading comes from Ephesians chapter 5. And there we see that those who have seen the light of Christ strive to leave deeds of darkness behind. For you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light, for the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Try to learn what is pleasing to the Lord, and do not participate in fruitless deeds of darkness. Instead, expose them. For it is shameful even to mention the things that are done by people in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, for it is light that makes things visible. Therefore, it is said, Awake, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The word of the Lord. Please stand for the gospel acclamation in the gospel. Let us fix our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Our gospel lesson comes from John chapter 9 and serves as our sermon text. And here we see that Jesus miraculously enables a man who had been born blind to see the Christ both physically and spiritually. As Jesus was passing by, he saw a man blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, but that God's work might be revealed in connection with him. I must do the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. As long as I am in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, Jesus spit on the ground, made some mud with the saliva, and spread the mud on the man's eyes. Go, Jesus told him, wash in the pool of Siloam, which means scent. So he went and washed and came back seeing. They brought this man who had been blind to the Pharisees. Now it was a Sabbath day when Jesus made the mud and opened his eyes. So the Pharisees also asked him how he received his sight. He put mud on my eyes, the man told him. I washed and now I see. Then some of the Pharisees said, This man is not from God because he does not keep the Sabbath. Others were saying, How can a sinful man work such a miraculous sign? There was a division among them, so they said to the blind man again, What do you say about him? Because he opened your eyes. The man replied, He is a prophet. They answered him, You were entirely born in sinfulness. You presumed to teach us, and they threw him out. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. When he found him, he asked, Do you believe in the Son of God? Who is he, sir? The man replied, That I may believe in him. Jesus answered, You have seen him, and he is the very one who is speaking with you. Then he said, Lord, I believe. And he knelt down and worshipped him. Jesus said, For judgment I came into this world in order that those who do not see will see, and those who do see will become blind. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. At this time, please fill out those attendance cards that can be found in the pew in front of you. You can also use the QR code found up on the screen and also in the bulletin. Later on when the serve, in the service as the offering baskets are passed, please place those cards in the baskets. For those worshiping with us online, you can find a link above or below the video to uh, fill out the form online. Thank you for your cooperation. We continue with the next hymn, hymn number 515, Christ is the World's Light.
our gracious Lord God, lead us to further appreciate how he has taken us from blindness to seeing. Dear Christian friends, brothers and sisters, have you ever felt like you're not of this world, like you're out of place? That's how Christians feel at times. Like we just don't belong here. And the more you come to know the Word of God, the more you come to see that we are not of the world. We're in the world, but we are not of the world. Everything is turned upside down, really, when you think about it in a good way. The first shall be last, the last shall be first. Those who are filled with sinful pride are humbled. And those who are humble are, are lifted up. Those who think that they're so wise are made to be foolish. Those who are looked on as foolish are wise. And as we know our Savior Jesus, we see those things that we can see as being less important. But those things that we don't see, like forgiveness of sins and eternal life through Christ our Savior, we see them as all important. It is, as Martin Luther wrote in the explanation of the third article, the Holy Spirit enlightened me with his gifts. When you are brought to faith, you believe in Jesus as your Savior, a light bulb goes on. You see things clearly. You see things that the world does not see. And the more you study the Word of God, the more you take it in, the more you see what God wants you to see. We have an example of this in the text before us, where Jesus brought blindness and sight. Those who think they see are brought to be blind. And those who are blind, Jesus brings them to see. The text is about Jesus healing a man born blind. Now they come upon this man, and the disciples, the followers of Jesus, have a question. And this is their question. Rabbi, who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? So they were figuring that this man must have been born blind because of something that he was going to do in the future that was so bad that God was going to punish him. Or his parents had done something so bad that they punished this man, that God punished this man. In some religions, that's, that false doctrine is called karma. In Indian religions, that false doctrine Doctrine is taught all the time. Karma, you get what you deserve. If you've done something bad, God is out to get you. This man was going to do something bad, so God is out to get him. You know, the friends that came to see Job, they had that philosophy in their minds, and they shared it with Job. Job, you must have done something really bad against God, that God is punishing you for it. So, even though some religions speak of karma, there are many people who believe this and how comfortless it is. Can you imagine living like that? Thinking that when you are maybe going through some kind of tragedy, some thing that is just hurting you so badly, and then you're told, well, you must have done something so bad that God is punishing you. It neglects a good number of teachings in God's Word. It neglects the teaching that really we're all in the same boat when it comes to sin and the punishment for sin. Without Christ, we should all be damned to hell. We're not talking about being born blind or some kind of a catastrophe. We're talking about hell. The wages of sin is death. That's what we all deserve. All of us. And sure, there are consequences for sin. 
for things that you do that bring consequences on you. If you have an affair, your marriage is probably going to be trashed. If you embezzle, your reputation is going to be gone. If you get drunk and you get into a car and you drive, it could happen that you get into a car accident. Maybe you, someone else is hurt or even killed. But the fact remains from the scriptures that Jesus paid for every single one of our sins. He suffered hell in our place. He agonized the agony of being abandoned by God for us. And for that reason, this is how Jesus responds to their question. He said, it was not that this man sinned or his parents, that he is blind, but that God's works might be revealed in connection with him. That's an amazing truth that Jesus shares here. That man was born blind for that moment. For that moment when Jesus was there and Jesus was going to show his glory as God by healing him. And this is recorded in Scripture. So all people that have read this section in the past and those that will read it into the future, you who are listening to it right now are being blessed and benefited by what Jesus says here. That he is saying that the works of the Lord are brought out through such suffering. And when we go through trials, God has promised he'll work it for good. And one way he works it for good is that he demonstrates the works of God. As you suffer and you continue to trust in your Savior Jesus for forgiveness and eternal life and that he is with you all the time, what a message that gives to the world. A powerful message. And Jesus says to us that his work must go on. He says... I must do the works of him who sent me while it is day. Night is coming when no one can work. And as Jesus' followers, we too are to be at work while it is day before night comes. When we can no longer work here. While we are here, we want to do the works of our Lord. Sharing his word with other people. Telling other people about the Savior who is true God, who went to the cross and paid for their sins. Yes, it was an amazing miracle that Jesus did here. Think about it. This individual was born blind. He was blind from birth. And yet, Jesus healed him. It's interesting what he did as he healed him. He made mud. And then he put it on the man's eyes. And the scriptures do not tell us why he did it that way exactly why he did it that way. But it was purposeful. And it may have been that he did it that way so that no one would deny that this miracle was done by him. The enemies of Jesus, oh, they wanted to discredit that miracle, reason it away. Did you see that? Look at that. Look what he did. And you would maybe think that they would say, look what he did as he healed the blind man. No, look what he did. He worked on the Sabbath, they said. Oh, how he has disrespected and disobeyed God. They were so full of hate toward Jesus and so stubborn in their unbelief that they looked everywhere and anywhere to discredit him and discredit the individual who was healed. See, they found themselves in a dilemma. Either they had to deny the facts that were before them, the miracle that happened, or accept this as being a valid miracle and therefore this being true God before them. So they did everything they could to discredit the man and discredit Jesus. And they cross-examined him over and over. Finally, the man who was healed, you can just hear it. He got fed up. He said, listen, look at the facts. 
Look at what happened. Put two and two together. I was blind, but now I can see. Oh, they became all the more upset. You filthy sinner. That's pretty much what they told him. You filthy sinner. You don't know as much as we do. Get out of here, is what they told him. Get out of here. They were blind. Oh, they thought they could see. Oh, they thought that they could see exactly what they needed to do to get heaven. Oh, they thought they could see everything, and yet they were so blind. It was really the opposite of what they thought they were. So blind. There are so many who are blind in the world. Oh, they can see with their physical eyes, but they can't see with their hearts. The skeptic criticizers, those that look are, are looking for contradictions and discrepancies in Scripture, trying to disprove the Word of God, and yet the Word of God remains. There are those who make fun of Christians about the media. So often we see that they promote a message against those that Believe what the Word of God says. You're seeing it also in commercials today. You know, commercials that have to do with offices and voting. And you see that it's looked at as archaic or old-fashioned. When you hold to the truth of Scripture that there is life in the womb and it is to be protected and abortion is wrong. Blindness. When you can't see those truths of Scripture. And Jesus brought blindness into this world as he came and revealed their blindness. He says, for judgment, I came into this world in order that those who do not see will see. And those who do see will become blind. So how careful we need to be so we don't fall into the trap of the devil to take on the thinking the philosophies of the world, because we're not of the world. We see clearly through Scripture what God has given to us. He has given us this sight to be able to see. And those who do not see, those who are blind will be brought down. And yes, judged to hell unless there is repentance. So this man who was born blind but healed by Jesus, he was cross-examined and then made fun of and kicked out by the Pharisees and the leaders of the Jews. And Jesus went to him. And this is what it says. Jesus heard that they had thrown him out. When he found him, he asked, Do you believe in the Son of God? Who is he, sir? The man replied, That I may believe in him. And Jesus answered, You have seen him. And he is the very one who is speaking with you. Then he said, Lord, I believe. And he knelt down and worshipped him. Jesus calls himself the Son of God. In many places in Scripture he calls himself the Son of God and also calls himself the Son of Man. And both are true, of course. As the Son of God, he is true God in every way. And we see how he is the Son of God as he performed this incredible miracle. We see how he is God, pure in every way. And then the Son of Man, how he took on human flesh, was human in every way, yet was without sin. He was thirsty. He was hungry. He wept. He grew. He grew in knowledge. He suffered and he died. The Son of Man and the Son of God went to the cross. He suffered and died and paid for all of our sins. And the man said, yes, I believe. That's what he was saying. I believe you to be the Son of God and the Son of Man, my Savior and Lord. And what did he do? He knelt down and he worshipped him. The man healed, worshipped him. Oh, he could see now, couldn't he? And I'm not talking about 
with his physical eyes. I'm talking about with his face. He, his faith, he could see now. And he worshipped his Lord God and Savior. Worship has a root word in there, worth. And when you worship like you're doing now, or you worship at home, or you wherever you go, and you worship as you seek to live for your Lord, you're showing how much God is worth to you. And the opposite is true. If we don't worship, then we're showing how little God is worth to us. And so we too say, yes, I believe. We too worship the Lord God. This man, he now could see Jesus as his Savior. To finish, I remember a young girl in the first church that I pastored. She was blind from birth. When she came to church, she came with her Braille Bible and her Braille hymnal, and she followed along. She worshipped the Lord. She could see, even though she couldn't see physically, oh, she could see better than most people. And she shared her faith courageously without embarrassment. She could see. So we are just like her. We're just like the man who was healed by Jesus. We were blind. We were blind in unbelief. But our Lord God, by his grace, brought us to see. We were blind, but now we see. Amen. The peace of God that surpasses all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We give our offerings to our Lord responding to how God has enlightened us with his gifts. Therefore, we give our offerings cheerfully and generously do now, or we give them online, or we drop them off, and we dedicate all those gifts to our Lord as the offering baskets are brought up. As we give our offerings, we sing the next hymn, I Want to Walk as a Child of the Light, hymn number 713. <laughs>
prayers this evening. We include a prayer for Joyce Sneeder, who is recovering following a fall that she had at home. You may remain seated for prayer. Dear Lord, we ask you to be with Joyce as she has suffered a fall. Keep her faith and hope in you strong and give her the knowledge that you work everything for her good. We give you thanks that you protected her from any serious injury, and we ask you, if it is your will, to help her to recover quickly. In your name we pray, amen. And we join in responsive prayer of the church. Eternal Lord, give us peace as we ponder the good news that you forgive our sins in Christ. Lead us to see clearly the path you have laid out for us. Provide courage and compassion to all who preach and teach your word. Fill them with a love like yours as they proclaim your grace to us and all people. Guard and guide the families of our congregation. Lead husbands and wives to love each other with commitment, respect, and patience. Help parents to grasp the eternal value of keeping their children close to Jesus all their lives. Grant joy to those who are single and make them a blessing to others. Provide wisdom and insight to those who make laws and set policies. Give us respect for those who protect us from crime. Lead us to value the rights of our fellow citizens and to defend those who cannot defend themselves. Give us passion to share the story of your love with our family and friends. Overcome unbelief and open the hearts of people everywhere to believe the good news that Jesus has forgiven their sins and open the gates of heaven. Extend your healing power to those who are sick and suffering in body or mind. Give patience and compassion to all who care for the sick and dying. Hear us, Lord, as we pray in silence. Gracious God, you govern and direct all things, and you love all people. Hear our prayers, spoken and silent, and answer them in your wisdom and grace. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who brought the gift of salvation to all people by his death on the tree of the cross, so that the devil who overcame us by a tree would in turn by a tree be overcome. Therefore, with all the saints on earth and hosts of heaven, we praise your holy name and join their glorious song.
bow our heads in prayer. As we remember Jesus' death and resurrection, we thank you that you have gathered us together to receive your Son's body and blood. Send us your Spirit, unite us as one, and strengthen our faith so that we may praise you in your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we glorify and honor you, O God, our Father, with the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we join in the prayer our Lord and Savior taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. seated. As we celebrate the Lord's Supper and members of our church and church body come to Holy Communion, approach up the middle aisle and return by the side aisle. When indicated, kneel, remain standing at the rail. Receive the wafer with an open hand and take the wine cup yourself from the tray. If you'd prefer to be handed the wine cup, simply hold out your hand. Hold your wafer hand up like stop if you would like a gluten-free wafer available in a sleeve on the tray. Non-alcoholic white wine is also in the, available in the middle of the cup tray. Cup receptacles are along the walls. If you choose the common wine cup or chalice, help by tipping it to your mouth while holding the base. Those not members are asked to talk to the pastor before taking in Holy Communion. The general blessing will be given at the end of Holy Communion. Please come for all things are now ready.
the true body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you to life everlasting. Go in peace. We give thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this saving gift. We pray that through it you will strengthen our faith in you and increase our love for one another. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. We remain standing for the closing hymn, verse hymn 517, stanza 1. Great to have you all in worship this evening. Uh, a few announcements here. Uh, tomorrow between the services, we'll have um, our, our morning uh, Sunday morning Bible study as we normally have there in the cafeteria of the school along with refreshments and um, um, coffee, donuts, and all that. We'll also continue with our youth league Bible study in the council chambers and Sunday school down in the church basement. Uh, the, tomorrow, we we'll be, should be finishing up the 10 Lies About God Bible study for that Sunday morning Bible study. And then next week, uh, we look to move into a new Bible study. This one is entitled Proclaiming the Gospel. It's one that's based on evangelism, then kind of an evangelism Bible study there to go and see how we can reach those who don't know about Christ, those who are blind, and well, um, tell them about Jesus so they go and go and see who Jesus is and what he's done for them. The call that we extended to Mrs. Uh, Cindy Goot has been returned to be our sixth and um, grade teacher and athletic director. Uh, because of this, we will be having a voters call meeting Monday, this coming Monday at 6 p.m. in the science room. So it's short notice um, that we had to get this together quickly to get um, um, people on the list. That's what the um, Senate told us. So this coming Monday at 6 p.m. in the science room of the school, not the cafeteria, uh, we will be having the Luther Prep um, Luther Prep singers here for a concert, and they'll be using the cafeteria for eating at that time. So I'll say it one more time. This coming Monday, 6 p.m. in the science room of the school. That's on the top floor, and if you go up all the way to the left, if you're going up the stairs, then to find the science room then. Also, the council meeting has been moved to Monday at 5.30, so that'll take place right before the voters' meeting and also in the science room as well. Wednesday Bible study continues at 10 a.m. in the council chambers um, there. Um, they're continuing to go through elephants in the room um, Bible study. It's about um, theistic evolution there and the issues that are um, there with it. Uh, this coming Wednesday, we have our Lenten services, one at 3.30 and one at 7 um, p.m. with a meal uh, at 4.15 to 6.15. That'll be hosted by the Youth League. Um, the Youth League will be serving Chick-fil-A sandwiches then for um, chicken sandwiches there um, for the midweek Lenten meal then. As I mentioned, Luther Prep Singers, they'll be having a concert here at St. John's this coming Monday at 7 p.m. here in the sanctuary. So you all are, remi are, are welcome to come to that and invited to that. And if you know anybody else to be interested, please um, let them know as well. 
Those are all the announcements I see. Uh, the Lord bless your week.